Welcome to a lesson with Dr. Powell. In this video, we will look at some three-dimensional surfaces, their graphs, um, and how to think about them. Okay, so let's take a look. And so this first one is um, ellipsoids. Push execute, and then we'll talk about what we see. All right. So we see, in a, so the blue part is the ellipsoid. It looks kind of like an egg or something like that. And then there's a red plane that's cutting it uh, right here. Um, let's see what this is from the um, and from the uh, code. But also, but before we do that, look, see how this red plane cuts it. What kind of shape is the intersection? Um, like on the outside right here, isn't it an ellipse itself? It is. So if we cut it this way, it's an ellipse. In fact, the different ways that we cut it um, will be like, this is a plane like um, uh, that's uh, like Z is equal to something. Um, and that, um, and that those cross cuts are ellipses. In fact, if we have a plane like Y is equal to something or, or X is equal to something, we'll also have ellipses. We'll see that. In fact, right here, there's two things being plotted we had z equals one here. What if we tried something like um, x equals one? Let's see how that turns out. Um, let's see, okay, sure enough, it also cuts it as an ellipse. See why this is called an ellipsoid? Okay, and let's see, what if we did uh, y equals one? Let's do that one. Um, it also cuts it right there as an ellipse. Okay, so we have um, this ellipsoid. Now, where does it? Now, what does the equation look like? It's right here. All right, so it's x squared over four plus y minus one squared over nine plus z plus one squared over twenty-five. Notice that if one of these parts was zero, like if you zeroed out any one of these, like this one right here, then you have just an equation of an ellipse. An ellipse there. If this part were gone then you'd have an equation of ellipse. And if this part were gone, you'd also have an equation of ellipse with just everything else. Well, they don't, doesn't even have to be gone. What if you just plugged in like a specific Z value and you held it there, like Z equals one. If you plugged in Z equals one and held it there, you'd get a constant. You subtract the constant over um, and you have a number. And if you want to, you can divide both sides by that number. But what you do, you still have an ellipse. So it, the different, if you fix a Z value, you have a constant and bring it over, you you have an ellipse. Um, if you fix a y value, you have an ellipse. If you fix an x value, you have an ellipse. Um, now, if you fix the wrong x value or y value, whatever, you're going to get a negative number over here. And uh, that graph wouldn't even work because you'd have the sum of two squares is equal to something negative. That's why the graph doesn't extend out um, indefinitely through space, but it's maintained right here in um, in this ellipsoid. Uh, shape right here it doesn't go too far away because otherwise the equation doesn't um, have any solutions anymore. So that's kind of, and the way we can do this is by looking at different cross sections um, and uh, looking at different graphs, for instance. So if you wanted to know what this looked like and you wanted to actually graph this out, let's talk about how we might um, actually go about doing that. Okay. So let's think about this for a second. If we um, if we take this and look at uh, this particular equation, what if we set, for instance, um, like x equals zero? So when x is equal to zero, okay, and we think about our axes, so the z-axis goes straight up. And then oriented, you have the x-axis going this way, y-axis going that way, and you have an xy plane down here. That's flat. So if x is 0, then we're just going to be looking at uh, this part of the equation right here. And in that, that's, okay, like y minus 1 over... Nine. So it looks like there's a center. This is like an ellipse, and you can find the center. So the center would be like one comma negative one, so one, but then you go down to Z, 
to negative one should be down here. That'd be this, the center. And then what we're looking at is um, in the y direction, you go out three from the center. So y direction, you go out three. So out there and you go out that way, three. In the z direction, looks like you're going out five, the square root of 25. So, so you go way up here. So in the center, you're going up there, right? Or kind of even higher, maybe right there. So, okay, so it looks like we're gonna have an ellipse going like that and coming down like that, okay. So kind of some kind of ellipse right there. Now um, you can plug in, okay, so that's, um, okay, and that's when x is zero. Now notice when x is zero and y is one and z is, so uh, when x is zero and y is one and z is negative one, that's the center actually of the whole ellipsoid. Um, so at this point, we have this in that direction, kind of um, in the yz plane. We can graph what this looks like in each plane. Um, in the um, xy plane, we can look at that graph, okay, and set that equal to one and look at what that looks like. Um, it's going to be from, it's going to be now from this case. So uh, when actually, let's look at, it's not really, it's going to be parallel to the xy plane because we're going to look at the case when, or the, um, Let's see, right, we're going to look at when z is equal to negative 1. So z is going to be down here. So we're really going to be draw it down flat right here with uh, nine, y is going out 3 and x is going out 2. So y is going out um, 3 from that. So it really goes out to that point and to that point. But then in the x direction, now it's going out 2. So it just goes 2 out. So not too much, just out that way. So even we just get, even just getting that and that going two directions, we can get another direction. If we did um, X and Z. Um, and so we just pick the center point to plug in. So Z is equal to, um, so let's see. Well, we already did Z is equal to negative one. I guess it would be Y, right? Y is equal to one. So Y is equal to one. We look at a graph here and notice that, um, the, in the z direction, we're going five. So basically we go to the top here and the bottom there. And then the x, we're already, we already have that. So we can kind of just kind of do a little sketch here and get this. And we kind of get a, a sense for how the ellipsoid would go um, just from, in our piece of paper, just by drawing different cross sections, meaning level surfaces for this uh, or level uh, planes or level level pieces. What I mean by level is you pick a level for one of your variables. You let one of your variables, you level it. You let it be a constant. You, and then you have something to graph that's two-dimensional. So you can use two-dimensional graphs kind of pictured in different planes going different ways in order to see what something looks like three-dimensionally. So you don't draw a three-dimensional surface necessarily. What you do is you fix one of your variables and then you graph you graph something two dimensional in a plane right there because it's an equation maybe that you recognize, and that's kind of how you tackle three dimensional drawings. Okay, so this is an ellipsoid. Now we can go on. Let's look at another one, an elliptical, an elliptic paraboloid. Okay, this one right here. Here's an example, and there's a cross section right there. Notice. This cross section is a ellipse. But if we did a different cross sections, they might look something like a parabola. That's why it's called an elliptical paraboloid. So here we have a z equals one. Why don't we do, um, let's just change this to something like x, for instance. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, look at the cross section. Cross section, you can kind of see it in the bowl. It's a parabola. So we can, um, and in y as well, we can look at that one um, and notice that you again get a parabola here out of it. Okay, so an elliptical paraboloid and one in the z when we when you fix z values they're they're ellipses, but when you fix an x or y it's a they're parabolas. Okay, <clears throat> so. Um, another one is a hyperboloid of, well, before we go on, maybe we should look at the actual equation for that, right? Okay, so um, elliptic paraboloid looks something like this. So it's kind of like 
if you fix one of your variables, it's like Z equals something squared, right? So if like X is fixed, like this is gone, then it's like Z equals this plus a constant, right? So just fix it so it's a constant. So pretend like this is a constant by fixing the X value, then this is definitely a parabola that way. Likewise, if you fix a Y value, it's a definitely a parabola. What if you fix the Z value? Divide out by that constant and you have equal to one. It looks like it looks like an ellipse, which would make sense. So even algebraically looking at it, you can kind of see what it is. Okay, let's look at another one, hyperboloid of one sheet. So this one, let's see what we can what we can think before we look at it. Um, so um a hyperbola happens, well, this looks like a hyperbola right there, if you just ignore this. In fact, if you just made this a constant, subtracted it over and divided it out, you know, it would be, um, it would be just fine. It might actually make the other guy negative or something, but nonetheless, you'd have a, um, looks like if you fix an X value, you have a hyperbola. Likewise, if you fix a Y value, you have a hyperbola. Hyperbolas, remember, have two different parts to them. Um, now, if, but wait a minute, what happens if you fix a Z value? And so this is a constant you add it over, you have something over here and, uh, it'll be an ellipse. Um, uh, yeah, because both of these are positive. So in two directions, it'll be hyperbolas in one direction, it'll be an ellipse. Hmm. Let's think about what that might look like. Maybe you can try to imagine it. Let's see what happens as we go. Whoo. Definitely one sheet. And in the, yeah, if we fix our Z values, we have ellipses just as we were th thinking. But in the other directions, we have hyperbolas. Let's see one of them. Let's see, let's just do one of them this time. Um, let's do Y. So, um, yeah. Let's see right here, the intersection lines, they are hyperbolas right there, kind of coming like that. Okay. So just, and so we see the intersection there with that constant value of Y being a hyperbola. Okay, let's look at the next one, hyperbola of two sheets. So same basic idea, except this time we have two minuses. See that? A minus and another minus. So fixing this value, have a hyperbola. Fixing that value, have a hyperbola. Fixing this value, it looks like you'll have an ellipse again, but Hmm, but why is it two sheets? Let's see. Well, definitely, okay. Okay, definitely hyperbola, different, definitely two sheets. And it, if we fix Z, we're getting hyperbola. Uh, uh, we could expect that because we have this minus that. But what if we fix a value of X? Well, hmm, let's just see what happens here when we fix a value of X. We fix a value of x. Um, notice that this value of x is right is not even hitting it. Okay, so it's so there are values of x that don't give us anything, and that's actually why it's two sheets. But if I move my x value, let's make it something else. I don't know. Let's try something else like this. See if we get any closer to it. Um, yeah, we have an intersection. Okay, so when it intersects it, it does intersect as an ellipse. So it's like you have these two. Um, hyperboloid kind of elliptical things kind of going off in both directions um, like that. Okay, kind of like, um, because each part of the hyperbola, you can almost think of it like a, it's not quite a, like a parabola because hyperbolas kind of eventually look like straight lines eventually, but um, same, but you kind of have this big kind of hyperbolic half bowl and it's elliptical as you go that way and that way. So before the single sheet, I guess they kind of, this bulge actually kind of came together like that. So that was the only real difference. Okay, and it just had to do with, and here we had two minuses there going on. Okay, what about a hyperbolic paraboloid? Let's look at that one. For a hyperbolic paraboloid, okay, well, wow. Okay, so we have a hyperbola going on in that direction, the Z, and that should make sense. Let's see, if we look at this, let's see, uh, if we fix the value of Z, yep, for sure enough. Now, wait a minute, what if we fix the value of X and it's like a parabola, fix the value of Y, it's like a parabola. And you should be able to see that as you 
play around with it. In fact, I see a parabola right there, right? If we go this way, to did cross sections the other way, that would be a parabola. You can kind of play with that. See, we can maybe throw those two in there so you can see here in the video. Um, so definitely a downward parabola there, for instance. Um, and, but if we move this to like X is three, say, see what happens, is that um, still, still downward um, as we go there. Okay, and as we go to Y, see Y would give us, um, okay, we're seeing an upward one right there. All right, okay, elliptic cone. What is this? Well, x squared plus y squared is equal to z squared. Hmm. Fix z, that should be a circle. Fix y, it's a constant, but z squared minus x squared over there like a hyperbola. Yeah, so fixing these guys might give you hyperbolas maybe. Let's see, mm, kind of interesting almost, but yeah, these, this cone actually connects at the origin, just the graph that can't quite see it, but sure enough, z values, are like that um and but not but it's interesting okay so let's kind of look at this for a second let's do different values here what if um what if we did okay so let's fix one of our values like what if y is one for instance y is one then it's be like z squared minus x squared is one, let's see what that looks like, execute it. Um, so we can see a cross section there um, and it's thinking and it gave us something. So look at where it intersected, look at the intersection right there. Yeah, you see how the intersection actually looks like a hyperbola, in fact it is. So the intersection actually is a hyperbola even in this cone, it's kind of fun. So in the cone, we actually see a hyperbola happening right before our eyes. Okay, in that direction, just as if we we would could get if we just fixed one of the variables. So these are the these are some basic shapes I'd like you to think about. Um, and uh, so again, ellipsoid, elliptic paraboloid, hyperboloid of one sheet, hyperboloid of two sheets, hyperbolic paraboloid. An elliptic cone and think about how their equations were constructed. Um, they all kind of had these x squared, y squareds, or z squareds, or sometimes just z, but um, by fixing one variable at a time, you get basic conic sections. Thanks for watching.